this is my 2005 2 litre 5 speed MX5. It's got a soft top, it has a naturally aspirated engine and a 5 speed gearbox manual. What more can you ask for in a little sports car, really? We'll have a little look at the engine and we'll have a little chat about it. Uh, like I said, if I can find the switch, it's one of the 2 litre MZR engine cars. 2 litre, 160 ish horsepower. That amount of torque, not much, but in a car that only weighs as much as a shoe, it's good fun. The slightly more modern cars, the NC2s and the NC3s, had more forged parts, revved slightly higher, uh, and were slightly more reliable. Uh, these tended to have oil problems, so oil consumption issues. I don't think this burns too much oil. I haven't driven it that much to notice, but we uh, keep a nice handy amount of oil in here. If we have a look at the space we have, it's not much as you'd expect, but who cares? I think you can fit some oil in here and a questionable plastic bag and some cleaning fluids. Oh, my brain. That's about all you need to know for the rest of the car. It's on 17 inch wheels, which are 205s, I believe, so nothing crazy. Uh, discs all round, a nice size for the car. You know, you're not going to have any problems stopping it. You'll run out of tyre first before you run out of braking. Uh, a soft top, which is in questionable condition, as we can see. I haven't cleaned it properly, as we can see, but it is lovely and simple to put down, which we'll demonstrate. You hit the release button, give this a little pull, and the system comes unlatched. Just with two hands, we can put it down like so. It kind of flops quite nicely. Is that down? Maybe not. There we go. And it kind of sits a bit neater than that. I think this is a bit old and worn out. But there you go. You have the top down experience. It's lovely to put it back up. You kind of want to drop the windows a little bit. Pull the handle. And then you can do one of these. My roof is a bit old and raggedy. So we'll ignore uh, how janky mine is. Okay, so a couple of little upgrades, a upgraded uh, dash unit, and then there's not much else to talk about in this car, really. We have a multitude of cup holders, for example, one here, one each on the door, which apparently in this pre-facelift car, they do dig into your leg a bit. I've not really noticed it, unless you're really like this or something, but it's not got cruise control or anything, so not worried about that. We have more cup holders here, a little bit grubby, and this latch is broken, so whenever I'm changing gear, this kind of slides around like so, which is always fun. But hey, life's difficult and we get over it. No push button start, none of that. Just standard ignition, clutch in just because you want to, not because you have to. And on she goes. Uh, whoops, at least the horn works. People talk about this little oil pressure gauge uh, in the center. Apparently, it doesn't really do much, and by the time that shows zero, your engine is probably already worthless. So, as you can see, it kind of reacts to the revs and the load, and it is just all digital. It does sort of work, but on a very delayed scale. Everything else, very normal. Fuel gauge, temperature gauge. There's no oil temp, which would be nice. I'd rather that was an oil temperature gauge. That would be cool. Uh, but other than that, it's quite a nice addition. It makes you think that it's a more little sporty car, and it sort of is. Five-speed gearbox in this. You can get them at the six-speed, or the two liters come with a limited slip differential. Uh, there is a traction control off button. Can't really see it, it's kind of <laughs> here. One press gets you DSC off. If you have it all the way off, and then hold down, if you hold it five-ish seconds, you will get the skiddy light coming on. There you go, a little skiddy, he's having a skid and having some fun. That means all the systems are off and uh, it won't limit you. The system is surprisingly limited on this car and it does, uh, it does hold you back. I guess it's for all the grandmas that are probably gonna drive this thing. A little bit of gearbox wine from the 17 year old gearbox that's probably been abused. That's okay, we can live with it until it explodes. So driving around town in this thing, as normal as you would any other manual, very relaxed, naturally aspirated car. There's no 
real snatchy throttle, the boost, there's no boost to come on. Very normal car, very good on fuel, a nice uh, aerodynamic shape, so nothing ridiculous there. It's a nice little car. Um, you do get waves from most of the other MX-5 owners, which is kind of fun. Makes you feel like you're in some kind of cult. Which, to be honest, if you buy an MX-5, you sort of are. And the only people who really buy these cars are racing drivers and wannabe racing drivers and grandma and grandpa. They, there is no in-between. That's just the audience for this car, which is hilarious and fantastic. And it actually makes buying one of these quite a nice experience. Rev matching is nice and simple. Heel toe is lovely in these things. Ooh, an e-tron, nice. Overall, it's just a very relaxed, nice car ownership experience. The only things that really go wrong in these are they leak and go rusty. Oh, and the engine oil consumption in these early gen cars, but get an NC2 and you generally have no worries about wet, except for wet feet. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to pop the roof down and uh, we're going to have a nice little uh, roof down experience too. And then you undo the latch and it just goes nice and down like that. Mine's a bit stiff, uh, but it's not necessarily a bad problem, is it? So, as you can tell, it's actually quite a laugh. I didn't expect this car to be quite as entertaining as it is. I thought it was gonna feel a bit slow, a bit lethargic. It's only 160 horsepower. And to be honest, I thought I was gonna have to fight it the whole time. But honestly, even without revving it all the way out to the red line, which is about, what, 7K, I believe? I'll put the number up here for the NC1 car. It's really not bad at all. Uh, even at high speed, so higher speed, 60, 70 mile an hour, you stick your foot down in fourth or fifth gear and it feels like it has some urgency there, but it's really not bad at all. Okay, so on to a little nice country lane for you. But down in second. Yeah, there's not much going on. Apart from two eagles fighting by the look of it in the distance there. But across a little country lane like this, where you really don't want to be headbutting tractors or anything like that, it's actually pretty much the perfect combination. Heel toes lovely. Into the sun. You can just have a nice little poodle around. You can have a nice little rev out. And honestly, what more do you need on a British country lane? If you had a Ferrari 488 right now with the top down, and honestly, you'd be into his lane, you'd be terrified of other people hitting you, you'd be doing 300 mile an hour and you would be terrified. <laughs> and you'd be out of fuel already. A 300 pound tank of fuel, gone. So, rev matching, lovely. Into second, downhill for assistance. And it almost feels quick, you know? The suspension, even through those tough little bumps, nicely damped, doesn't shock you or anything like that. And even if you leave it in the lower gears, it pulls you out of the corners nicely. So even if you're lugging the gears fourth or fifth, like a grandma would do, not a problem. Someone comes around the corner like that, you only take up a tiny weeny bit of the road so you're not concerned. It's, it's actually a very relaxing, fun driving experience that doesn't leave you broken, afraid, you haven't wet the seats. It's a good car. And for the money as well that you can get some of these uh, older facelift cars, I mean, they're grouping up, as is everything right now. But honestly, go buy one. If a nice one comes up for a nice deal near you, even if it needs some work, give it a try. So even with this slightly older car, the handling's nice and tight. There's no ridiculous knocking noises or anything like that. And even with the top down, hopefully you can hear me fine, but you can have a nice conversation, you don't have to shout. 
the top up. Uh, you can hear a few more things in the cabin rattling around, but it's a very civil car that you can make quite rowdy quite easily. So you stick a nice uh, exhaust manifold on, which does free up a lot of power. You take one of the set of cats out from the front. Uh, there's another cat down the middle, but you take that one out, frees up some power and hopefully passes MOTs, which is smog and emissions in the UK pretty much. Uh, a nice rowdy back box. And then you've got yourself a nice little race car that you can impress people with for absolutely no money whatsoever. So, take it nice and slowly over the train tracks. <gasps> Francis would love this. Okay, so second gear, 2000 RPM, foot down. And we're going. And we're at 60. So, yeah. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> that's about my general experience with this car. I think, yeah, okay. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm not like, whoa, holding onto door handles and scaring myself. It's a nice car, nice power, nice on fuel. If you want a sports car that will make you go, nice. MX-5, an NC MX-5, good car. So even then, first foot down in first gear. No, <laughs> traction control all the way off. No wheel spin, no nothing. It just kind of crept up and went. Which, I mean, <laughs> I think a nice little supercharger kit, about 200 horsepower would be where it gets a bit silly and a bit leery. But 160, naturally aspirated. Yeah, yeah, you're not gonna get in too much trouble with this thing. I see, I doubted this car for years. I doubted it. Anyone who bought one, I thought they were a bit of a sissy. I'd be like, what girl buys one of these? What feminine lady? And you see all those feminine ladies were having a way more fun time than me. It's like when you go to the pub, right? I equate this car to the culture of beer versus cocktails, okay? You have a beer and it's like a muscle car. It's great, it's fantastic. It's nice and refreshing, but deep down, you're looking at these little cocktails, the sex on the beach, the porn star martinis, and you're like, I want one of those. That looks like it tastes great, but it's for women or something. And then you have one and you're like, they've been having so much of a better time than I have. You know, it's sweet, it's zippy, it's fun, it's, they're not expensive. I mean, that's a lie, actually, they can be. They get to have the top down. <laughs> and by the end of the night, they, uh, they're not sitting there with a the beer belly, you know, feeling unhappy. <laughs> I don't know where this analogy is going. Is the more I drive this, I don't feel like I get egged on. I've just seen it. it's gone over 90,000 miles. It's like congrats on the 90K to this little MX-5. <laughs> I don't feel like it eggs me on like the little hot hatches do. I've had a Fiesta ST, I've had an Ibiza Cupra. And both of those cars, to have fun, you need to be accelerating hard. You need to be really giving it the beans. And honestly, that probably gets you into more trouble than it should.
we've been interrupted by a Ford Fiesta. Of course we have, but that's okay. Even in that little drive there, you can see how engaging these things are. They, and I didn't expect this, they really suck you into the drive. Like I didn't expect, especially when I first picked this car up, I thought it would just be a throwaway little daily driver that might be, I might be able to chuck around a little bit. You know, rear wheel drive, might be able to get the back out every now and then, safely, of course. But I didn't expect just driving it normally and just with a 10% of uh, spirit in there, like that little drive back there, I didn't expect it to grab me by the balls in the way it did, in the most respectful way possible. Uh, and you do have to be a bit careful with them because they're very sensitive to tracking and tire choice and things like that. So if you go throw cheap, crappy tires on it and it's out of alignment and it's something's broken, then yeah, it's gonna be dodgy because of course it is, it's a rear wheel drive car. So, hang on, there's a, there's a bump there, yeah. See, I went from this, from a couple of more modern cars. Um, the one thing I had to get used to again was the lack of rev hang on this car. Like this thing, I can actually change gear quickly. And I mean, it's maybe to a detriment. So sometimes I had to change gear faster than I'm used to driving slowly. So I have to do almost a race car gear shift to stop the revs dropping too much. Or double clutch the thing and add a bit of throttle back in to kind of blip it back up like a, something from the 1920s. <laughs> But it means that, like, I drove a Fiesta ST. That thing, when you went from first gear to second gear, you'd always bang second gear in more than you'd maybe want. I mean, one downside with a little car like this as well is you do tend to get people not looking at it because it's not really a big intimidating thing by any means. So it's not like it's very obvious. Uh, it's not like a big intimidating SUV or something. The lights are excellent. Uh, I've not had a little car with headlights this good. But other than that, a Mark 1, oh sorry, a uh, Mark 3 NC1 MX-5 is something I think you could consider as a cheap little sports car purchase. You should go and buy one of these. And you should buy one now. I think with the top down, ignore my slightly mangled roof. I think this thing looks actually pretty good. For the age of the car it is as well. If you put on a custom plate or something and you didn't have the age in there, it'd be hard to tell from the back especially that it's as old as it is. From the front, I do prefer the look of the new NC2 cars because I mean, it's got the little uh, sharky mouth thing going on there. But apart from that, get yourself a cheap, dusty MX-5 and go have yourself some fun.